You need to figure out what is the magnetic attractor to drive the change. And unless you tap into people's self-interest and then work as a collaborative to align those self-interests for community benefit, for collective impact, that's the nugget. You began making change way before the term social innovation ever appeared on the scene. Mm -hmm. And I think you understand probably as well as anybody that social innovation is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me what your bold vision is? When I tap into my rage, which is really the thing which drives a lot of this work, it's really focused on how people work together or don't work together. Um, I have a, a deep commitment to changing the world, but the question needs to go deeper. Yes, we need to change the world, but the, the big question is how. Hmm. My career has really been focused and my passion is on coming up with new models of collaboration that break through all of the baggage that we've had in the past. And so much of that is about recognizing and being honest about what really motivates us and moves us. A big idea maybe rushing in too soon is for me, it's about how are we harnessing the power of self-interest mm. to be used as a force for good, a creative, constructive, peace as opposed to one of uh, destruction, which is what we have in our, our recent history as a society. And so what, what drives me, what gets me up in the morning is a fundamental belief in the power of people to collaborate to achieve the change that they want to see in the world. What I hear you saying is that there's something much deeper that in fact, uh, as you said, that, that that process is actually a product. Mm -hmm. And that if we can create ways, as you've done, mm -hmm. and we should talk about that, yeah. where people can come together across differences, across uh, perhaps dif disciplines, maybe even mm -hmm. people who've betrayed each other mm -hmm. or have been betrayed. They're maybe. the most important. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And maybe I can, I'll just move this into some practical yeah. stuff because it's, um, to me, you know, there's lots of talk and the real test is how do you actually do this stuff? And so, you know, what's the change I want to see in the world? I want us to be able to design systems and processes and, and products and services that reflect our values, that put people and the planet first. And mm -hmm. so this is, this is super important. As a part of our 10 year anniversary, we've recently come up with a new definition of social innovation. Oh, okay, because so that I want to hear. Yeah. I'm very interested in that. Uh, you know, one of the things that in you know 10 years in this field, looking at what is social innovation and, and uh, feeling a little bit frustrated by the kind of exclusivity that so many of the definitions uh, present. Mm -hmm. And also really feeling that I, we needed to come up with a way to recognize that we're building a movement for change. Uh, so, you know, I, I, not to reference any older definitions, but we've got two new pieces in our definition that I think are really profoundly important. One is, what we're saying is that there's a difference between social invention, which is the new idea or the systems change, right. and innovation, which even by Wikipedia's definition is the adoption yeah. of that innovation. Yeah. So when we look at the concept of innovation, what we're gonna, what we're doing is we're saying, absolutely, we need the systems changing inventions, the new products, the new designs. But ultimately, the real test is in who adopts that. Yeah. How does it get integrated? How does it get rolled out into the mainstream? And who is a part of adopting those new ideas? So take renewable energy, right? A critical idea concept to reuse existing resources, mm -hmm. useless unless we actually build an entire business around it, yeah. unless there's a market case for that work. Yeah. So the concept of the innovation being about the adoption means that we can really focus on putting the wind in the sails of this work yeah. and move it away from just the limited elite concepts into the mainstream. So I think you're also saying, if I, is that the innovation is in the way we come together. That's right. And that realizes the adoption. So that's a very, I think that's a very important insert or evolution mm -hmm. 
-hmm. in the thinking. Um, I want to explore though one other piece that you said a moment ago, which is self-interest, because I don't think I've heard <laughs> anybody express this. But yeah. and if I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, and I want you to explain this more. But you're you're actually intent on tapping into self-interest. Everyone's self-interest. Why right. and what's that about? Right. It's a radical concept, provocative concept, but it's it's absolutely critical, yeah. right? Yeah. So if we're going to move the mainstream, if we're going to build a movement for a better world, if we're going to find a way to put people on the planet first, we need to tap into what motivates them. Yeah. And you need to figure out what is the magnetic attractor to drive the change. Right. And unless you tap into people's self-interest, build the kind of relationship that allows people to reveal their self-interest and then work as a collaborative to align those self-interests for community benefit, for collective impact. Hmm. That's the nugget. Self-interest in itself isn't bad. It's what we're bringing into. It's the energy. It's the drive that we bring. And the question is, how do we design new systems and approaches that allow those self-interests to yeah. come together yeah. for collective impact? Yeah. And that's the design challenge. Great. It's yeah. going to be a threat or opportunity that creates the magnetism that creates the change. A lot of that threat or opportunity comes from a place of self-interest. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do we go there, tap yeah. into that richness of energy and, and, uh, and survival instinct yeah. that people have, and bring that alignment in and accept that as an element in our design process? Seems to me that you're then saying um, that the conversation and I'm simplifying it, but the conversation has to go the other way. Um, and, uh, and so instead of broadcasting, mm -hmm. it's about receiving. But what is the practice of social innovation? A lot of that is around pattern recognition, right? Yeah. It's about reflective practice, right. about looking for patterns, and it's about using design thinking and creativity yeah. to be able to come up with new models that will yeah. have traction. But yeah. our definition, if I could remember it exactly, is around... Uh, the invention and adoption of new and renewed ideas that put people and the planet first. Right. And I want to draw some attention to this concept of people and planet first. No other definition that I've seen asserts a dominance of people and the planet first. And what I'm suggesting and proposing is that the economy, government, and culture must be subservient to people and the planet mm -hmm. first. And that's huge. What's a job? A job is not an end goal. It's a tactic to achieve health, wealth, a prosperity, and happiness for an individual. So one of the things I think we lose touch with is what do we? what is our goal really? The conference we're at is a conference where um, we're, we're inviting people to sort of jump over the, their edge. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. without a parachute, I, want, I have a couple of questions for you there. It's like, what crossroads are you at? What is the utility? What is the infrastructure that needs to be in place to catalyze social innovation in Canada and around the world? Mm -hmm. And so we are increasingly, the Center for Social Innovation, we see ourselves as a platform. We are uh, physical spaces, but we are also a conceptual space. And more importantly, we are a community. And it's almost like I'm imagining that we're a utility, almost like an mm. energy utility, a piece of infrastructure that is here to support the movement mm -hmm. for social impact. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've got uh, 10 years, we're playing with BHAGs, and we're really focusing on what we mm. think are the, the most critical pieces. And for us right now, our focus is on honoring and leveraging and leaning into the power of connection. So the social innovation, the social entrepreneurship space is very much about how we're replacing the old economy, the broken economy, with a new economy. Right. And so the question of how we can speed that process up as quickly as possible, continuing to put people on the planet first at every turn, and how do we work together and build the models which will be the social infrastructure that support the next generation? So final question. What do you say to the mother of an eight-year-old daughter? I'm gonna, I'm gonna slightly reframe. I have two children. I have two boys, 12 and 14-year-old. I tell my boys each and every day, be an initiative taker. Create the change. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. You need to do it. Our work is huge, and there's incredible opportunity, but don't live in fear. Mm -hmm. I have a motto in my own life. Mm -hmm. 
which is to make social change and have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, why? In order to be accessible to everybody, we can't be living in, and existing in these rarefied intellectual spaces. We have to be accessible. And this next generation of people, we connect through social. We connect through salad clubs, through partying. I build hula hoops in my spare time. It's super fun. Why? Because you know what? The process is just as important as the product. Okay. And you know, I'm gonna go down fighting, but heck, I'm gonna have a great glass of wine in the process. Great, okay, so Tanya, the <laughs> next time we do this, and yeah. we should, we should actually, uh, we're gonna do it and we're gonna talk about the role of hula hoops yeah. in social innovation. Great. How's that? Thanks I love very it. much. Al, thank you. <laughs> it's great. <laughs>